Cameron Boyd. Pom, we're talking about a guy here born on the 22nd of September, 1998. Played nine matches in 2023. Got a little bit unlucky, if I say so myself, after that suspension against, was it Port Adelaide for this sling? Yeah, it was one of, yeah, it was the Port Adelaide game, yeah. Came back for the prelim. Um, and I think similar to Chincotta going into the year, wasn't quite sure where he was in the pecking order. And by the end of it, I think he's well and truly uh, an important piece to the list. I, th- I think he's, see what we said about Chincotta, isn't he? He's one of them players that probably, when people name their best 22, he's probably on the skirts of... 22nd man, 23rd man. He's that player that probably isn't the exciting one. Um, But he's a real credit to probably the biggest scheme of our list that probably five years ago, this guy was a walk-up start, wasn't he? But now, because we've got that, he is one of the interchangeable pieces of an ever-evolving list. And what I like about Boyd is since he's been here, he's really added things. So people used to get really excited about, oh, he can kick. Well, Jesus, foot, professional footballer can kick a ball. The Jeep's, bar was low. <laughs> Jeepers, what next? He's got a working face. But he's added elements to his game, hasn't he? And I really like the fact that he's got a bit of a personality as well. I, yeah. I feel sometimes Carlton of old, when I say Carlton of old, I'm going back to 2017, 2018. Everyone was copy and paste personality there's something about Boyd, isn't there you see how he engages with the players he's a little bit quirky as well i sat with him at one of the sponsors events the guy's a little bit out there and you kind of need that when you're in a team you need that out there mentality and he's a guy that's gone from strength to strength the more games he's played yeah it was it was unlucky played against the pies first game for the year um got himself all the way through to you know, that Port Adelaide game. Obviously, he missed a game with the bye. And then he just became a reliable piece down there. I think can't help but put him and Chincotta in a similar vein because I feel like they both got comfortable at similar times in the in the side. And then I think that piece that you just said there, we're seeing a bit more of his personality. Um, and that's probably a reflection on the environment around him and how well he's respected. Um, it was clear that they... They found a really important use for him. And I guess the big question is what happens in 24 when when Zach Williams is back in the mix there, you know? I think naturally my mind goes to, you know, him and Chincotta uh, in this Zach Williams-esque role. You know what excites me? There was a few players last year who got injured or suspended. And years gone by, we'd be just ticking the days off the calendar yeah. until they were eligible again. Boyd really... He, he got that suspension, but look at the players that came in and mm. took the role, and we weren't begging for Boyd to be back, and he had to bide his time to get back in the system. That just shows you that we are now a proper football side where we've got 25, 30 footballers, and Boyd, two, three years ago, was waiting for that opportunity. Now he's got himself into that ilk of top 20, top 25 players, and He's now going to be keeping players honest because we do know round one, Zach Williams, walk-up start, should he be fit. Yeah. But Boyd and Chincotta will be saying to themselves, hang about, we got Cal into finals. We're going to put the pressure on you and keep you honest. So this this player here is the same as Chincotta. I'm excited for Zach Williams because we've got these players on the list. Gone are the days where Zach Williams can have seven mediocre games because one of these yeah. two are ready to step in and say, Go back to VFL, Zaki. I've got you, mate. No, it's a good point. And, I mean, you talk about making a name for yourself in big games. He had his best game of the season in the final game that he played, which was the prelim. Uh, Just played with a... I don't know. I think you can always tell a lot about a player in these high-pressure games. I thought he, he took his moment really well. Um, certainly was one of our better players or better handful of players in terms of who performed their role on the day. And I just think it's a nice addition to the list. I wasn't sure about the move initially because I didn't know much about him at all. 
And now I find myself really enjoying him on the list. Now he's a grasser, a grasser, a yeah. small forward for the Bulldogs. So, I mean, you weren't the only one. The only elite yeah. is our national recruiting manager. But no, I think the wonderful thing about Boyd as well, a lot's got to be said about players like Chin Cotter, Cottrell, who have come through the system and not got any love. So it's all well and good going into the draft, newspaper articles, Cal Toomey getting excited about you, to a lesser extent me getting excited about you. But it's these players that have gone through there, they've had to take jobs at McDonald's, they've had to sweep floors, they've had to go and shovel the proverbial football poo as it were, and then they get their opportunity and you see it. You see it in abundance. You see Cottrell's graph. You see Boyd coming into a prelim against one of the most potent offensive sides in the league and he knuckled down four tackles. Two of them were goal-saving tackles. There's a little bit of a desire and a bit of a... He's paying with hurt, anger, pain, suffering and you need them players around there and I, I agree with equality. I think I think Boyd would be one of them players that maybe isn't in everyone's best 22. But I don't. Th- I keep saying this. I don't think Voss cares about talent. Voss no. doesn't give a shit about your resume. He cares about game day. And Boyd has got whatever it is on game day in abundance. Yeah. No, look, it's he's become a, an exciting prospect for me moving forward because I think he performed his role well. And I think he can still improve in what he does and get even more confident than what he already is. So where does that leave him for 2024? I think it's when we need him, he'll be called up. I don't know if he would necessarily be first choice. But having said that, I think he is the type of player who clearly showed you can't underestimate their ability and their desire. And it's good to have players like this on the list now. These are not the types I'm so used to talking about. May I've got a lot of time for a man that has his nails painted, wears a hairband, and then plays like a psychopath on a weekend. Yeah. For me, like like that is that is it. And I think Boyd is one of them players that he's one of them players that when he's out on the paddock, I see Chin Cotter, I see Cripps, I see Cottrell. I know what I'm gonna get. I, I know it's gonna be the best of their abilities. I'm never gonna question them on the paddock. I, I know they're gonna give me a hundred and ten percent and you need these players. Nick Newman's another one as well. Do you know what I mean? Who's you just know he's going to give you a seven out of ten at his worst. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to what's in store for Jordan Boyd. What about those of you at home? Let us know. How do you see his season playing out in 2024? <laughs>